Total hip replacement is becoming more and more common. It's one of the most common procedures that we do. It's more and more common in the U.S. with our aging population. Um, it's one of the most successful surgeries of all body parts of all time that we've ever done. Uh, the advantages of it are multiple and the risks associated with it are becoming less and less. So the patient is a patient that, again, is severely limited in their daily activities by mostly groin pain, but pain within the hip with advanced degenerative changes on their x-ray. The ideal patient is not overweight, does not have heart problems, does not have diabetes, but none of those things in and of themselves prevent you from being a good surgical candidate. So patient expectations are extremely important for the discussion of hip replacement. We have to know ahead of time what their activity level is, what a patient's goal activity level is. Because if a patient is spends most of their time sitting on the couch and that's all they want to get back to doing, then that's a lot simpler than a patient that is an active runner and wants to return to running. I've trained on anterior, posterior, and lateral approaches to the hip. Beyond, within that, I've also trained on the mini posterior approach to the hip. That's my preferred approach to the hip after exposure to multiple types of techniques. The mini posterior approach to the hip is in line with the standard posterior approach to the hip. However, it's a much less invasive approach. This is both from a skin incision standpoint as well as a muscle standpoint around the hip. In general, the mini posterior approach is applicable to all patients. How many it is, is variable. The larger patients often end up with larger incisions uh, that correlate with their size. But beyond that, it is still much less invasive than it used to be. Recovery from total hip replacement at the end of the day is get up and walk on it. That's, I want you using the hip, I want you using it as much as possible. Immediately after surgery, we'll have you work with physical therapy and begin mobilization within the hospital. I'll often use a walker or crutches for about a week or two, primarily because I want you to learn to walk without a limp. The main limitation of any surgery, and having had hip issues before the surgery, is that the muscles are weak. So we have to strengthen them after we've now eliminated the source of the pain. My primary advice to anyone as far as should I have the surgery is that it's interfering with what you want to do. If it's interfering with activities of life, you can't do the things that you want to do, I think it's worthwhile regardless of age. 